Yo, what's poppin' people? Your boy Snacks is back at the building with another banger. And before we get started, you know what to do. Do your boy solid. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn your post notification bell on. So you know what to do. So you'll know when your boy is going live. Or when I'm dropping some heat like this. And today, we are gonna have a conversation. And I mean a serious conversation. Because I've been... I'm a basketball guy, and I'm a WNBA guy, first and foremost. So, with all of this drama, and I've been watching Monica McNutt, beautiful ass, all week, because she been everywhere. But I've been a Monica McNutt fan for a long time. Back in, back in, even when she was a little bit smaller, you know, back in them Georgetown days when she was hooping, hooping, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get to this conversation, Caitlin Clark and Angela Reese, that everybody's been avoiding. I mean, nobody's nobody's really having the tough talk that needs to be had about the truth or about how this situation comes about. And none of this is possible without Angel Reese. None of it. Caitlin's fame and popularity, all of it, all these new fans in the WNBA watching. Let's let's call a spade a spade and let's tell the truth about the situation. Without Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark is not famous as she is right now. She is not as revered and talked about and challenged as much as she is right now. Because uh, three years ago, when Caitlin Clark was in the league, in, in college, playing ball, balling out, doing her thing, we knew about Caitlin in Iowa. But the talk of college basketball was Don Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks. And was Gino Ariema going to get UConn back on track? And all of a sudden, here comes these ladies in LSU balling out, doing their thing. Five little black girls doing their thing. And they got this one particular girl that is all over social media, all the parties, hanging with celebrities, doing TikTok. And then they got this other young lady that can rap, dropping bangers, doing her thing. LSU was all the hype. Caitlin Clark wasn't in nobody's mouth. We weren't talking about what Iowa was doing. Yeah, she was out there balling, but Angel was getting all the shine. Angel was the face of college basketball, women's basketball, before Caitlin Clark was. There will be no Caitlin Clark without Angel Reese. Let's just tell the truth. Let's just call a spade a spade. And the only reason Caitlin Clark is where she is today is because of Angel Reese. It's not that she can't ball. It's not, it's not that she's where she's at. She has all this fame and popularity. She's been propped up because white America said, that black girl shouldn't do that white girl like that. But nobody paid attention when Caitlin was in Iowa pushing players and talking trash and not guarding players and doing all this shit. Nobody was talking about Caitlin Clark until that one fateful moment when Angel Reese put the You Can't See Me on her international championship game. When she put that pointed at her ring finger and did the, yeah, white America lost their mind. All the broadcasters, all the sports journalists. Because if y'all remember correctly, if y'all follow the sport, they was already touting Angel Reese and LSU as the bad girls of basketball. They was already mini Detroit in all aspects of the game. 
But everybody drew to Caitlin Clark because she was a victim of her own circumstance, of something that she had already done to other players. And when it was thrown back in her face, she became a victim. Then all of a sudden, Caitlin was getting her, her fire was growing. The spark was there, but she hadn't blossomed yet. Nobody was Caitlin Clark this and Caitlin Clark that. Y'all y'all remember, that was LSU in South Carolina that was drawing all those fans. That wasn't Caitlin. They were coming to see Don Staley in South Carolina because they was on an undefeated streak. They were coming out to see LSU because they were the bad girls and everybody wanted them to lose. Caitlin Clark became America's sweetheart because she got to face those girls back-to-back years. And after that first game, that first season, that's when everybody drew to Caitlin Clark. Not because Caitlin Clark was balling. Her statistics came after everybody focused on her game. After Angel Reese did the you can't see me to her face. Nobody was talking. Angel Reese was trending on Twitter and TikTok and all. Because she had all the social status. Caitlin Clark didn't have a million followers, two million followers. Caden Clark wasn't making a shit ton of money on TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and had all those followers. That wasn't until after Angel did what she did. She had a small base, but she wasn't worldwide until they blew it up. Until Angel Reese waved her hand in front of her face while playing Caitlin Clark. There wasn't no Caitlin Clark. She was a good player. We were talking about her shooting and doing that Final Four run or how good she was. and She was dropping people off, but she, she wasn't worldwide until she got done how she got done. You can call it how you want to call it, say what you want to say, but those are just pure facts. When ESPN reported on women's college basketball, they reported on LSU, South Carolina, UConn. Caitlin Clark wasn't no headline. She wasn't a draw. It wasn't until Angel Reed waved, waved her hand in her face she became a draw. So, now, Caitlin Clark is good for the game because everybody has tuned in and yes, the lady can ball. She is a baller. She can ball. She loves the game. And we continue to support and do all the things we do to follow Caitlin Clark and hopefully Indiana gets back to where they were in 2016 and win another championship but it's going to take a while that's a young team right now who runs the NBA the WNBA is Las Vegas <laughs> my girl Asia's out there clowning doing her thing still getting beat up but Asia's doing her thing longer the days of Cheryl Swoops Lisa Leslie Tia Thompson you know those ladies doing their thing. Candace Parker's retired. You know, Diana Taurasi still out there giving them hell, talking shit, tripping players up, doing her thug thizzle. Gotta love it. But, Caitlin Clark is a draw. But Angel Reese is balling out. And should, on her pace, should win rookie of the year if she keeps playing like she's playing. Because right now, <laughs> I don't give a damn who doing what. Angel Reese got rookie of the year so far into this season. Balling hard. St- statistically and from the eyeballs, Angel Reese 
right now is leading in rookie of the year. So don't get it twisted. Yes, we love Caitlin. We're going to follow her career. We hoping she blossoms and gets all the money she can get. But let's call it how we call it. There is no Caitlin Clark without Angel Reese doing what she did. And there is no denying it. It's all facts. You can go watch it all over again. But anyway, man, we're going to get out of here. You leave your thoughts, leave your comments. I had I had it on my mind as I was coming back from Houston this morning, you know, and watching Monica McNutt uh, on the interwebs. I'm not supposed to drive and watch the interwebs, but, you know, it's YouTube. I'm able to. But collectively, y'all leave y'all thoughts and comments. Let us know what y'all think. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's do what we do. We out. Peace.